and overcoming and taking that next step. And we talked last week about the love of God and the love of the Father. And so we just want to take uh, uh, the time here today and look at some scriptures and, and just encourage everyone to, because, you know, the Bible says that faith works by love or through love. And sometimes we can really get caught about wondering, well, how can I do what God wants me to do? How can I step out and be where God wants me to be? And if you really study the love of God, it's allowing the love of God to flow in you and through you to other people. Because that's what breaks the bondage. Amen? And so whether you're visiting somebody in the hospital or you're visiting somebody in their home, it's, it's opportunity to share the love of Jesus. How many remember uh, Ray Nuff? I remember Ray Nuff. He's been with the Lord a few years now. But I'll never forget meeting him in the parking lot out here at the church. And, and we used to meet upstairs and... He asked if he could come. He wanted to stop by. He went to a Unitarian church. And, and so I didn't beat him up about what he was, uh, you know, learning about. But I said, you know what, we'd love to have you. And so come on in. And so, you know, over time, you know, he began to come out. And he was always very faithful. And, and remember he made the, uh, uh, how many remember what kind of pie he made when we went to the, uh, at our church picnic? Do you remember that pie? Tomato pie. Tomato. And, uh, and uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, interesting. But uh, anyway... The neat part there was that he was put in our lives to share the love of Christ and to show him Jesus. And so, you know, Minnie and then his, uh, his girlfriend, uh, Marie, and I remember praying with her down the hall here. And, uh, you know, so you've, you're going to have people that are going to come in and out of your life that you're going to be able to show the love of Christ too, and that's very important. So when you step out, and sometimes the enemy will come along and say, well, you know, in your little town or your little this or your little job, what possibly can you do for the kingdom? I want you to know that it's your job to simply show the love of Christ. Just show the love of Jesus and allow God to do the work. It's in Him that works to do His good pleasure in our lives. And so we want to do that. And so the Bible declares that Christ in us is the hope of glory or the hope of the world. If you take that word glory, it means the manifest presence of God. So you shouldn't take it lightly when you get a chance to pray for your friend that they get a job or, or that you get a chance to pray for someone's healing or whatever. All of that is ministering to them in the name of Jesus. And based on that, you're showing them Jesus. And so Roger and I were just talking prior to service about how, you know, some people's approach to witnessing for Christ, you know. You can put them in a chokehold and, and shake them until they get saved or you can show them Jesus. And so... There's, I, I'm kind of a little bit um, more of the let's show them Jesus approach. Um, I'm not saying either or are more or less effective, but I think in showing them the love of Christ is really what Jesus did. And so let's go with, with me, if you would, please, to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 14. And, and we're going to go looking at verse 8. It says, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it will be sufficient for us. And Jesus said, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And so how can you say, how can you show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? And the words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me, and he does the work. So the neat part here is Jesus was answering them, saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And then he goes on to say, he who dwells in me is the one that does the work. So I want to think about what you're working hard to accomplish right now for Jesus. Maybe think of your goal as we're, you know, halfway through 2015, and you're trying to think, okay, what am I doing for God? What am I doing for Jesus? What am I doing for the work of the Lord? And so as the enemy comes along and gnaws at your brain and says, well, I don't know if you're really doing much, I guess the question would be is, are people seeing Jesus in you? And if they're seeing Jesus in you, then you're doing the work of the Father. And I want you to take the, the stress off because it says here that it's God that does the work through you. That's what the scripture says here. So it didn't say as long as you're sweating enough. I mean, Hannah went and worked hard, and she held up drywall with her head and learned how to screw things in and get things done. But all of that was necessary, but at the end of the day, they were talking about the love of the Father. As the gentleman would get teary-eyed and talk about seeing the love of Christ coming through these kids, that's what was ministering. That's the anointing. John Osteen used to have a book talking about the divine flow. It had a bright cross on the front cover, and it was talking about following 
love. Because love is the anointing. The miraculous realm of God's love is that as you fall, follow that anointing, that is the love of Christ. And as we talked last week about walking in love, not falling in love. And so when you have something that you're drawn to, you may have had a specific person or a situation that somehow the love of Christ just wells up big on the inside of you, that's a situation that you're to stop and pray. That's a situation that you're to sow into and begin to say, you know what, God's really just drawing me in that area, and I want to go and just believe that God's going to minister to that. You would be far better to minister in that area than to say, well, I've got to make sure I touch 100 people today. No, if God called you to touch one, if God called you to share the love of Christ of one, that, that's effective. And so what we see here, notice it said that it's God that dwells in you, but it's also God that does the work in His good pleasure in your life. The Father is revealed through Jesus. Now, think of how easily the gospel could be preached if we allowed the revelation of the Father to come from us and through us. Amen? You know, we talk a lot about, you know, there's the grace life and, and all of that is absolutely so important and following in what God has for you. But by showing that the love of Jesus, I had a friend the other day and, and uh, you know, he's unfortunately, again, he really struggles with his belief but he said, you know, maybe someday I'll have to receive that simply by faith. And so, uh, really, that is. So I guess the good news on my part uh, was that somehow I was able to exhibit Christ in such a way that even he would say, I guess, at some point I might have to just receive that by faith. Because he's kind of a numbers guy, right? But uh, praise God, that's the building block that you need to do, all right? Uh, many people want to see the manifest manifestation of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, and all of those things are necessary, and all of those things are welcome. But at the end of the day, it's the love of Christ that moves you. The Bible says that love is the one that breaks the yoke, breaks the bondage. The love of Christ says it moves, and it moves you by faith. Faith worketh by love. And so the work part is through love, and so that's something that we need to really look at. Now, the Bible says, and go with me to uh, uh, Ephesians 4.13. We want to look at a few scriptures here. <clears throat> We're going to go to Ephesians 4, 13 through to 16. It says, Till we all come to the, to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man. Moffat's translation there says a mature man. A perfect man or a mature man. So that's something that we need to work towards. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in cunning craftiness or deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him who is the head, which is Christ from whom the whole body is fitly enjoined and knit together, that every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causing growth of the body, edifying itself in love, building itself up in love. I want you to notice there, it says every joint supplies. What does that mean? You could be the little toe in the body of Christ, and that little toe, I guess, is pretty important. I guess your big toe is pretty important, too. The big toe is bigger than the little toe, and both are smaller than the knee. Both are smaller than the elbow. Both are smaller than your head. But all of those things make up a human body so that we can function. I want you to notice here that every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. So what part of the body are you today? I remember a long time ago when Wilma took the time to do the Dewey Decimal System for our church library. And so in that cabinet back there was an area of supply that she could walk in and she could do it. I mean, probably, we do you guys even know what the Dewey Decimal System is? <laughs> Sarah? Really. No? Well, it was a way of finding out library books and you could locate it. Remember going to the library as a kid and you'd look up the Dewey Decimal <laughs> System and it would be, uh, you know, uh, find the right book of where it is. I guess now you'd Google it and it'd tell you the location in the library. <laughs> but, but that cabinet back there is full of all kinds of stuff that somebody took the time to every joint supply to find the opportunity for people to enjoy that and be enriched by that. I got my Kenneth Copeland magazine this week, and it was my first digital copy. 
It was a lot thinner than the regular copy. I don't really get the digital part, but maybe because you can watch it on your laptop. I don't know. But every joint supplies. And so you need to find that area of your life that you can say, well, Pastor, um, you know, we know that Ann has been so faithful in supplying us with good coffee every, every morning, Sunday morning, for a long period of time. Every joint supply. When you guys are all filling your face, she's in the office. And that's okay to fill your face. But she's in the office recording all kinds of things from the service. And that is a blessing. Blessing. But your blessing may be, well, Pastor, I'm, I'm not able to do that, but I, I am able to pray in the Spirit every morning for this church. I am able to sit, take some time and pray for the pastor, and pray for the kids, and pray for the youth, and pray for all of those. That's every joint supply. That's every joint. So, you know, sometimes we think, well, I don't know if I got this big opportunity. Your opportunity is a big opportunity. Alice seizes her opportunity when she goes to a nursing home. Amen? When she goes and she just begins to share the love of Christ, every joint supplies. You know, you may be able to do it through Facebook and be an encouragement to somebody. Or get on the phone and say, hey, how you doing? And encourage and lift up and build up somebody. Every joint supplies. And in doing that, you're following the law of love. And we know that faith works by love. And so sometimes if you want stuff to move in your life, you need to step out of your life and say, praise God, I'm going to make it happen in someone else's life. I'm going to build somebody up. We know that every joint supplies fit together. That's what makes the body. That's what makes the body. So the next time the enemy comes along and says, well, you're really not doing much for God. After all, you haven't saw God too much in your life lately. You need to stop and say, wait a minute here. Am I following the divine flow of love? Am I following the love of Christ? Am I following that flow that God has inspired me or just put his little thumb in your heart and said, hey, do this or pray this or go and visit this person or share? And so what you need to do is you're building yourself up in love. The Bible says that there's a more excellent way for the see, to see the uh, operation of the gifts of the Spirit in your life, and that is through love. 1 Corinthians 14.1. Let's go there. 